up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am actually heading to Orlando, Florida, and I'm gonna be teaching at the Hero event with Masters of Balayage with my good friends, Ryan Whedon, and Confessions of a Hairstylist, Jenny Struby. So, let's go. ready to head off to Orlando. We're about ready to catch our flight and so I'm so excited for this trip because I actually get to speak twice at the Hero event and I'm going to be sharing all about how you as a hairstylist can grow your business but also have a lifestyle that you absolutely love. And I'm also going to be sharing some Instagram tips and strategies. So I'm going to be sharing a little bit of behind the scenes on what I'm going to be talking about and I'm going to take you guys along for the trip as well. I'm all mic'd up. I got my Britney Spears mic moment happening here, but I am so excited to be sharing with you guys a little bit of the sneak peeks of what I'm going to be teaching today at the Masters of Balayage Hero event. It's going to be so, so fun. And so let's take it away. Jamie Dana. And what sometimes that happens is, is we're just posting things to post things. And the algorithm doesn't actually like that. They want to see high quality images, videos, and stories versus just posting to post. So let's talk about what that actually looks like. So what is considered high quality content? So the first thing is something your audience wants to see, not something that you want to post. So I know a lot of times it can be tempting to share on your Instagram stories something that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm here, I'm doing this thing, here's a picture of my Starbucks, I just really wanna post this. And your audience is like, I don't freaking care. <laughs> so guess what? They're not gonna engage with it. And so high quality content is stuff your audience wants to see. I want you to find that post that went viral or did better than all of your other content and I want you to think, what about this post is different? What about this post did I do differently than before? What about this post did my audience like? And I guarantee you that there's something that you did a little bit different, whether it's the hashtags you used or the caption you wrote or the type of content it was. Maybe it was a video instead of a photo. So I want you to get really start to analyze your content and start to think, what is a high quality piece of content versus just posting to post? Next up, high quality content is something that adds value to your audience. And typically this is most likely through the caption. So something that adds value to your audience is again, being thinking of what do they wanna see, but also what's gonna add value to their experience on Instagram. So a lot of times this can come in the form of like an educational post. So if you're speaking to clients and maybe your goal is to get more clients, Share with them some educational stuff. You would be shocked at how much clients have no idea about what we do. So maybe you could do a post in your caption, maybe it's a photo of some retail products that you sell at your salon, and you could do a post saying something like, what's in your shower? No, really, what's in your shower? Did you know that the types of products that you have in your shower can do X, Y, and Z? And these are the types of products that I actually recommend that you have in your shower to maintain your hair color, X, Y, and Z, right? Do you have any of these products? Do you see how that caption was a little bit more engaging than just, here's some retail products, you should buy them, on sale this week, right? That's not engaging, that's not adding value. Another type of caption could be talking about the, um, the service that you're doing. So maybe you could talk about balayage and maybe you did a whole post and in the caption you wrote something about the difference between highlights and balayage or the difference between foliage and balayage or why balayage is so amazing because it's low maintenance. Whatever the case might be, you want to be thinking of that dream client, think how can I add value to them through my captions. High quality content makes your audience want to engage with the post. So it makes them want to like, comment, share with their friends, save it for later. In fact, the algorithm loves when people save the post. In fact, they actually rank that higher now than anything else. 
So when somebody saves your post, you know that little like flag thing in the corner, like a Pinterest save? If somebody saves your post, it tells the algorithm, hey, this person wants to come back to see this piece of content. So Instagram's gonna go, it must be pretty good, right? So if your audience is saving your post, if your audience is commenting on your post and commenting longer comments, that will show the algorithm that it's high quality content. So this is a common question that I get with Instagram is, okay, well, if I don't need to post every single day, how often should I post? Does anybody want to take a guess of how often you should post? Just shout it out. Once a week, twice a week, highest engagement. Anybody else? When you have content worth posting, Brittany knows. I, I hear you over there, Brittany. Okay, so consistently, that's the right answer. So I never like to say, you need to post five times a week, six times a week, three times a week. I say you should post when you can post consistently. So whether that means you're posting every two days, every three days, every week, once a week, you just wanna be consistent with it. And the algorithm doesn't like it when you post once, and then you go two weeks and you haven't posted anything, and then you post three times, right? I call that shotgun posting. It's like doo -doo 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 -doo, and then all of a sudden silence. And then we reload, guys, and then four more posts, right? The algorithm does not like that. And your audience doesn't like that because they don't know what to expect from you. They're like, what happened to that Jamie girl? She went MIA for like three weeks. And then all of a sudden there's like 16 posts in my feed that I have to scroll past. <laughs> no one likes that. So we wanna make sure that you're posting consistently and when you have really high quality content to share. So strategy number two, your audience wants to know you more and they wanna see more than just hair photos. So this is a big one. A lot of times I click over to a stylist's Instagram page or a salon's Instagram page and all I see is hair photo after hair photo after hair photo after hair photo. I don't know what the person looks like. I don't know where their salon is. I haven't seen anything of what kind of retail they sell. I don't know anything about them. All I see is hair photos. And so I'm gonna share with you guys some examples of why it's so important to share more than just hair photos and how your audience actually wants to get to know you. So here's an example. You guys can kind of see. Hair photo after hair photo after hair photo. This is what I actually call mugshot photos, okay? And the reason why is what is it? The front, the back, there's actually no front. There's just back and side, right? Mugshot photos. No one wants to see a page full of mugshot photos. And this kind of page too, like, yeah, they're good hair photos, it's good work, right? It's all my work, by the way. Um, the work's good, like, it's great hair photos, but it's boring. Literally, no one's gonna wanna click follow on a page like that. It's because there's nothing intriguing them to see more. They know what's gonna come next. It's gonna be another mugshot, right? So instead, we want to add personality to our photos. So you guys can see this other page, it's got a lot more personality. It's got photos of the stylist working, it's got photos of the salon, it's got photos of products, of tools, of processing photos, and these hair shots aren't mug shots. There's personality in them, there's movement, there's a braid, there's the client playing with their hair, there's just a lot more fun. Out of these two pages, which one would you click the follow button on? The right one, right? I was like, wait, which side is it? Okay, the right one. Right? Because it just looks so much more intriguing. Here's another example. So this one, there's actually no photos of the stylist, but there's a lot more personality added in there. There's like more hair photos that have personality, there's braids, there's different poses with the client, there's product shots, there's, um, you know, the scissors, there's actually the stylist hand holding the hair on that one. Do you guys see the difference though? So I actually have polled my audience about this and I asked them, how many of you guys in your last nine photos have just hair photos? And so the majority of hairstylists said seven or more of their last nine photos were hair photos. Only a few stylists said they had a mix of hair and other photos and less than 20% of stylists 
said they had equal hair and other photos. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some photo ideas. So flat lay photos. So these could be photos of products, this could be photos of your tools, this could be photos of your business cards, your shears. Take a picture of this. You guys could do a ton of these ideas. Um, I actually have a membership called The Social Suite that provides monthly stock photos. I asked a lot of you guys who are in The Social Suite. I see some of you guys here today. Um, so this is gonna be things that you can add into your page to add in that personality to kind of break up your feed so it doesn't just all look like hair photos. So flat lay photos. So here's some photo ideas, you guys. Photos of a braid, photos of you applying color, a processing photo, um, photos of the client and the foils. I'll be honest, one of my most highest performing posts ever was a photo of a client with foils in. <laughs> Crazy, right? So now, not am I only getting client photos after, but I'm getting client photos while they're processing. Because again, that's just more content than I can use. And I can use that to be an educational post about why I use pink foils or whatever, right? Clients love seeing that kind of stuff. So photos of your clients, tips and tricks type of posts. Next one is personal photos. So if you've never posted a photo of yourself on your Instagram page, I want you guys to really think about incorporating that. So photos of the inside, photos of the shampoo station, photos of your station, um, photos of your salon. Clients want to see more of what you do. And if you think about it, a client, before they come in to see you, they might be kind of nervous. And so if they don't know what environment they're stepping into, if they have no idea what they're, what they're gonna walk into, they don't know the vibe of your salon, they're gonna be a little nervous. So by seeing photos of your salon and seeing photos of your space, um, seeing photos of your space, it'll allow them to be able to kind of get an idea of what they're gonna walk into. So salon photos are so important. In action photos, again, same thing as like kind of behind the scenes, but photos of you working on a client, photos of you taking a photo of your client, mixing photos. You guys can see all of these were taken by my photographer, but they just show that client experience just a little bit more, so clients are a little bit more comfortable coming to see you. And last but not least, event photos. So these things are so fun. So photos of this weekend, share with your audience, your clients, that you are also going into education and getting educated yourself. Not only do clients think that's amazing, but if you're trying to become an educator or, no, or open a salon, other hairstylists are like, hey, that stylist is out getting education. It's important to share those kind of things. So share event photos, classes you taught, classes you took, industry events, salon events, that kind of stuff is really important too. Did I share any new ones that you guys hadn't maybe thought of? Raise your hand if there's some that, I haven't, that you haven't thought of. Cool, awesome. And the cool thing is when you take photos like this ahead of time, you create what I call a content bank. So how many times have you guys ever had a moment where you're like, so I know I need to post on Instagram, but I'm not like nothing to post. Yeah, happens, right? So let me show you guys some examples of some Instagram pages that I feel like are doing a great job with this. Now I know sometimes up here on the screen it might be a little hard to see, so what I'd love for you guys to do is uh, write these three Instagram handles down and take a look at them later, not right now, but you guys can take a look at them later and also give them a little love. So the first one is Caitlin Does Color. She's actually one of my OHOT Graham students and I just love how she's incorporated her hair photos into her page. So she's got the hair photos, she's got product photos, she's got photos of her, um, photos of her and her husband, um, just different flat lay photos, and then beautiful hair shots. And she's actually incorporated more like photos of her working, she does extensions now. You can really see that from her Instagram page. Oh, sorry. Okay, go back. So that was Caitlin Does Color, write down her Instagram or take a photo. Next one is Leo by Liv, and I love this page. So this page is actually nailed. And I love this page because I love how they've incorporated different, different types of content into their page. So it's not just, you know, hands. Like how many of nail pages have you guys seen? It's just this. I call this the mug shot for hands, okay? You guys know what I'm talking about? Or the lashes, it's just the one eyeball. Creepy, okay? So Leo by Liv has done a great job with their content and they just really added in some fun different poses. They added the nail polish bottles. They added the client holding the nail polish. Like just fun stuff, right? So check out their page to just get some fun different um, content ideas that are maybe outside of the hair world. 
And last but not least, Teddy Bicker. She's also one of my OHOT Gram members. And I just love how she's incorporated product photos, photos of her working in her salon space, um, photos of her working on a laptop, and then her beautiful hair photos as well. She's just done a really great job. And you guys, I could show multiple different people on here, but I think it's just important to just start to notice that when you go onto somebody's Instagram page, what do you like about it? What makes their page stand out? And chances are it's probably because they have a little personality added into it. So I wanted to create what I call Instagram categories to make things just a little bit more simplified. Because if we can make life simple, then that's gonna make a lot of things easier, right? So I want you guys to think about your Instagram categories. And these are the different things that I post on my page. So the first one is business and Instagram tips. My second category is hair and techniques, like hair techniques. And thirdly, lifestyle and personal photos. So I'll show you guys a screenshot of my page. Okay, so one of the really cool tools that I use is called the Plan app. And I love this app. And so there's actually a little hidden feature with the Plan app that a lot of people don't know about. So I'm gonna walk you guys through it. It's kind of hard to see it up there. Oh, it's actually not too bad. Okay, so on the Plan app, there is this little space down at the bottom that says strategy. It's like a little grid, okay? Then you're gonna click on that strategy and it's gonna open up this thing on the top. And this is where you would put in your categories. So let's say your three categories were the ones that you guys wrote down or four categories or five. I think you can add about five in there. So you're going to add a category. So for me, let's just say hair technique video. That could be maybe one of my categories, right? I'm gonna add that label and then you're gonna click this little add button and what it's going to do is it's going to pop it into your grid as you plan it out for the future. So then you now have your little spot that says motivational quote, right? Then you go find your motivational quote or create a graphic or something for that spot. So now all you have to do is you have it in there and it's gonna help you set up your categories so that you're making sure to show them off. So maybe you're planning out your grid and you're like, okay, I got nine photos, but I haven't done a photo of me. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add that as one of your little categories, pop it into your plan app, and now you're gonna have that little grid that's like, hey, this one needs to be a photo of you. Then you can go find a photo of you that works. So this is really, really helpful to actually help you plan out your Instagram posts. So I know a lot of times what can be really overwhelming when it comes to Instagram is so often we take our photos from the salon and then we're like, shoot, I gotta post on Instagram. So you scroll through your Instagram, or you scroll through your gallery, and you're like, hey, here's one I'll post. So then you find that photo, and then you go edit it, then you adjust it, then maybe you put it into something like Plan or Planoly, you organize it, make sure it works. Then you take that photo over to Instagram and you write a caption, you write all the hashtags for it, and then you finally post it. Do you guys see how exhausting that is? So what we're gonna talk about today is batching things together. This is what you can do at the salon. And feel free to take a photo of this, I know it's a lot to write down. So at the salon, you're going to do all of these things so that you don't have to do them later. So you're gonna take photos of your clients, obviously. You're gonna take photos of your salon photos or your detail shots, your station, your product photos, your stock photos, your tool photos, all of this stuff, you're gonna do at the salon. And you're gonna do this on a time where you've got nothing else to do. So no more complaining when you have a client that no-shows or you have a cancellation, or you have a hole in your day. I don't wanna hear complaining. There is always something to do. So these are things that you can do. You can make videos for content, even if that means you're like, I don't have a client here, what am I gonna do? Get a curling iron and do your own, do your own hair. Sit down at your station, do a tutorial on yourself. Make content. When you go home from the salon, these are the tasks that you're gonna do at home. You're gonna decide what photos and videos you want to post. So I like to do this where I go through all the photos that I took for the day, and I'm going to say, I want to post these ones in the future, and these ones are trash. And you're gonna do that with every single client. You're gonna literally get rid of the old photos that don't matter, and you're gonna say, hey, I want these five photos were great. You select those photos all at once, versus finding a photo and scrolling through later, and it just takes so much time. You're literally going to select the five awesome photos and ditch the other 20, and keep those five photos. Then you're gonna edit all five of those photos at the same time. Because guess what? When you're editing one photo, you're editing all the other ones very similarly. So you're gonna do that all at once. 
Then you're gonna get them prepped and lined up for post-its. You're gonna pop them into the plan app or Planly or whatever planning app you use. You're gonna write captions all at the same time. So you're gonna do it all together. You're gonna to figure out your hashtags. You're going to schedule your posts in order using, like I said, plan or Planly, whichever one works. So you're doing this all at the same time. You're literally batching certain tasks and doing them together. And then when it comes to editing photos and videos, let's break this down a little bit more. So I like to personally, when I finish my client, like I said, select my five, 10 photos, whichever ones I like, and then I'm gonna add them to my content bank. So I usually create a separate album for them in my phone. And on iPhone, you can do this. On Android, you can do this. You create a little album, you put them in there, and you're like, these are my favorites. These are ones I could post in the future, right? And then again, you're gonna batch edit all of them together. So you're gonna edit all five together because chances are you're editing them really similarly. And then I usually like to put, put them into my plan app and like start to organize them. And maybe I don't pick all five at the same time, right? But maybe I pick like two. Like I'm definitely gonna post this one next week and then I'll post another one in the future. Not only did we talk about saving time through batching content, but let's talk about saving time through creating a maintenance plan. So creating a maintenance plan will help you stay on track. And this ties back to our very first strategy of staying consistent with your posting. Because I know half the battle with Instagram is actually staying consistent with what you're doing. A lot of times it's like, we have the photos or we have the con, we have the photos or we have the content, but we just don't have a consistent uh, plan. So staying on track with the maintenance plan. So once a week, I usually recommend doing this on your day off probably a Monday or Sunday, you're gonna batch all that content like we just talked about. So you get your photos, you edit them, you put them in Planly or Plan. You're gonna plan out a week's worth of content. So if you wanna post every other day, that's about four to five photos a week. So you're gonna grab four to five photos, you put them in your plan app, then you're gonna type out the captions and hashtags, just like we mentioned, for every single post. And then you're gonna schedule times for them to post. Now, the reason why I like Plan is it doesn't post automatically for you. And if you're using an app that posts automatically for you, don't do that. Instagram really doesn't like anything that's automatic. So you want to make sure that you're actually posting the photo on your own. So the cool thing is with the Plan app, you can schedule times to remind you. If let's just say you had about 15 minutes a day to spend on Instagram, this is what I would do. And this is a reminder, this would be posting every single day. So let's just say that you're not posting every single day, but this is on the days that you do post. If it's a posting day, you post your post. Then you comment back to any new comments left on your previous posts. And this is important. If you guys are not commenting back on your posts, how do you expect other people to comment? If you're not interacting with them, you're literally like opening up saying like, hey, I'm gonna start a conversation and then people comment and respond back to your conversation, and then you ghost them. Don't do that. You wanna respond back to your comments, so go back to your previous post and respond back to your comments, and then respond back to any DMs or any inquiries you have. Oops, let's say you had about 30 minutes a day. So if it's a posting day, you're gonna do your post, you're gonna come back, comment back to new comments, you're gonna to respond to your DMs, and then, because you probably will have a little extra time because you've done everything super easy and like a scheduled little maintenance plan, you're gonna go through your feed and you're gonna like and leave a comment on 10 to 20 people's photos. You could also go to hashtags and do this. You could interact with people who follow you and do this, whatever you wanna do. But you're gonna spend about 10 to 15 minutes engaging with other people. All right, guys, that is a wrap. We just wrapped up the conference yesterday. I'm getting ready to fly back home to Orange County, Orange County, California, that is. And I'm just so glad that you guys could be here along for this little vlog segment. So make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. This is a little bit of a different kind of video than I normally do, but let me know in the comments if you guys liked this video. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. So I'll see you then.